It's my position, okay? Yeah. On A. Can you just give us a rundown of coal? Well, the Commonwealth of Learning is the latest Commonwealth organization to be established. It was established by heads of government in 1987 when they met in Vancouver at a meeting just like this. And we started in January 89. The main purpose of it is to promote the development of human resources in all the countries of the Commonwealth, but especially in the developing countries. And to do that using what is called distance education techniques. The point, very simply, is that no country can any longer meet the demands for access to education if you rely only on the conventional system of schools and colleges and universities. So we have to find other ways. And finding other ways means using communication technologies in order to supplement the normal ways of teaching and of learning. So people can follow courses now by the old-fashioned, if you like, correspondence type work, supported by audio tapes or videotapes, or even supported by teleconferencing. There's a, a convergence, a meeting taking place between the developments in communications and all of these demands for more education. Nearly everyone we have met here in Zimbabwe has been talking to us about how can we go on and get degrees and so on. Well, not everybody can go into the university, but they can do at least a part of their work using distance education. And distance education is associated with print work, as with books, with tapes, simple audio tapes, where you can listen, or videotapes, where you can actually see how to do something, or by teleconferencing, where if you have a center here in Harare, people can be in other parts of the country and still follow. And in that way, they'll be teaching and learning taking place. That is where the Commonwealth of Learning is all about. Mm -hmm. um, we understand um, developing countries have um, prob problems of uh, foreign currency. Um, would you see this idea actually materializing in these countries? Well, foreign exchange is a problem. But, you know, problems can be overcome. I think that a lot of the programs we are talking about can be introduced using local currency. Where it is necessary to have a foreign exchange component, it should be for the Commonwealth, through the Commonwealth Secretariat, through the Commonwealth Fund for Technical Cooperation, through the Commonwealth Foundation, through the Commonwealth of Learning. Those are ways in which we must help you to overcome those problems. But it should not be seen always as giving and giving and giving. People must also try to help themselves. If local costs are met by local people with local currency, then we will do our best to help with the foreign currency. Do you think uh, this um, uh, you know, form of learning is at all ideal for Zimbabwe? I do not know about ideal, but I am sure that Zimbabwe doesn't have any choice. Speaking to Minister Fei Chang this week, she was saying to me that 35,000 teachers in Zimbabwe have to be upgraded. How are you going to upgrade them? Are you going to take them all out of the schools and put them into colleges? You can't do that. So just to take that as one example, they will have to get some of their training by these techniques I'm talking about. Then they can be brought together for workshops on weekends or once a month and so on. So I believe that a combination of face-to-face -face teaching, 
and learning at a distance is the only option that people have. And in other countries, it's working. Thousands of people in India are getting degrees by distance. We have just taken materials from Nigeria and given those materials to Guyana in the West Indies in order to upgrade their teachers. This morning, I presented to the um, Deputy Prime Minister of the Bahamas the Zimbabwe material in maths and science because they want to train their teachers of science and mathematics. So it is in this way that the developing countries working together can help each other. Everybody does not have to remake the wheel. If you have a good program in science, why can't you share it with others? If they have a good program in nursing, why can't you take it? This is what the Commonwealth is all about. Thank you. People helping each other. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very good. Thanks, Peter. From which Zimbabwe could learn. Zimbabwe might um, wonder whether this idea of uh, distance education does, does work. Um, could you give us you know, typical examples of um, uh, countries where this practice is uh, actually being carried out? Well, really, distance education is not new. What is new is the application of technology to combine with print in order to make learning pleasurable. That is what perhaps is new. But as you may know, correspondence education has been with us for quite a while. Very close here, we have UNISA, the University of South Africa, which has been teaching by correspondence at degree level since 1946. But in the modern times, the idea of distance education is to use all the available resources and infrastructures. I'll just give you a few examples at degree level where distance education has been used effectively. The University of Nairobi launched some four years ago a Bachelor of Education degrees program using print, audio cassettes, and face-to-face -face meetings to great effect. In fact, it is that same program that has now been copied by Makerere University in Uganda using the Nairobi materials to establish their own external degree program, which is being launched a week from now. University of Lagos in Nigeria has been teaching Bachelor of Education degrees programs in the sciences. Some people think that you cannot teach science at a distance, but it can be done, provided you have the right combinations of the things that are required to make a student learn. They use print materials, audio cassettes, slides, videos, in regional centers where students can come and view the various programs. So what happens then, you see, is the effectiveness of one good teacher is multiplied many times. Whereas in the former conventional system, one good teacher only benefits the 30 students in the classroom. But we are saying that through distance education, such a teacher can teach 3,000, 30,000, because the modern technology makes it possible. University of the West Indies in the Caribbean has been teaching distance education programs using teleconferencing system. Similarly, the University of South Pacific. In short, I'm saying that within the Commonwealth, we have many examples of successful distance education programs at all levels, at university, pre-university, secondary, teacher training, technical and vocational, nursing, continuing medical education for doctors, as well as teaching of literacy teachers by distance methods. So Zimbabwe has, I think, a very good beginning in that they don't have to start from scratch. There are enough examples around the Commonwealth from which Zimbabwe could improve on their programs. Thank you very much. Right. Sure. Been explicit. Okay. So do you want a tape running? Yeah, sure. Yeah, 
Now, Kenya is in Africa, so you have to go to there. Bring your cursor down. Just pull it down. There you go. That's it. Now press. Okay, now you get all the countries of Africa coming uh, in. No, you don't. You get all the Commonwealth countries in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> From Kenya, I can see now. Kenya. Hold on. You can't, you can't do it until actually you get the, uh, the mouse. Everything comes up. Now, move your uh, that thing up to Kenya. There. Press. So it's Kenya. Now, uh, this is government, that is economy, physical people. Oh, gee. Oh, they are a locust. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, there's a film now. Yes, that's a film. Video. Oh. This is another dimension. I can understand this one. <laughs> So, what about that? Oh, you'll get it repeated. Oh, okay. Well, if I come to transport? No, it doesn't always help. What about industry? Industry? No, that doesn't. The that one is what? Economy? No, that one is Because it's still only a prototype. But there you are. extension to, to what we do already and those exhibitions that we have there are already um, created by the countries of the Commonwealth so again it's an extension of that concept that's right that's right 
Right, I think this will help me. Yeah. <laughs> this will help me build a very nice story out of this. Good. Right, I think. Thank you. Oh, it's <laughs> nice, isn't it? It's nice, so nice. Yes. The Commonwealth is not about people seizing power whilst the voters sleep. The Commonwealth is about free and fair elections, and that is fair. The Family Planning Association. Right. Do not take one. Commonwealth take one. The Commonwealth of Learning is committed to finding and applying new methods of teacher education and training to complement conventional systems and speed a solution. Having been launched in Vancouver, Canada in 1988, Commonwealth of Learning has spread its fillers to all the 50 Commonwealth member countries. Improvements in quality of education are not easy to attain since the quality of education largely depends on the quality of teachers. And in a world suffering from the ravages of growth, repeat sentence, and in a world suffering from the ravages of growth and change, the supply of this human element has become severely constrained. Against this background, the Commonwealth of Learning, through its desire to triumph over the problems of education in Commonwealth countries, is busy seeking modern distance education technologies. And its latest technology is the video teleconferencing system. This system facilitates teaching and learning at a distance. Underlying, repeat paragraph, underlying, <coughs> repeat par paragraph, underlying course efforts is the Commonwealth Institute based in London. The Institute is already a huge repository of information about the country's people and concerns of the modern Commonwealth. Professor Peter Kinyaunju, Professor Peter Kinyaunjui of course said, the application of technology makes learning pleasurable. You can tell last one. Was not happy. Right, Commonwealth last tag. The Commonwealth of Learning is committed to finding and applying new methods of teacher education and training to complement conventional systems and speed a solution. Having been launched in Vancouver, Canada in 1988, Commonwealth of Learning has spread its fillers to all the 50 Commonwealth member countries. Improvements in quality of education are not easy to attain since quality of education largely depends on the quality of teachers. And in a world suffering from the ravages of growth and change, the supply of this human element has become severely constrained. Against this background, the Commonwealth of Learning, through its desire to triumph over the problems of learning in Commonwealth countries, is busy seeking modern distance education technologies. And its latest technology is the video teleconferencing system. This system facilitates teaching and learning at a distance. Underlying course efforts, repeat paragraph, underlying course efforts is the Commonwealth Institute based in London. The Institute is already a huge repository of information about the country's people and concerns of the modern Commonwealth. Professor Peter Kinyaunjui, of course, said the application of technology makes learning pleasurable. Thank you. Thank you, baby. But could the establishment of shelter homes be the answer? One would think so if there is not a long-term solution in sight, while at the same time, sex education and counseling programs intensify. But could the establishment of shelter homes be the answer? One would think so if there is not a long-term solution in sight, while at the same time, intensifying sex education and... What's wrong with me?
But could the establishment of shelter homes be the answer? One who thinks so if there is not a long-term solution in sight, while at the same time intensifying sex education and counseling programs. Veronica Gutu, ZBC News. Had not been established at the time of their death. He is survived by his wife and a child. Take two. Born in 1958 in Chimanimani district, Comrade Mtlanga, whose Chimurenga name was John Zrenika, joined the liberation struggle in 1975. At the time of his death, Comrade John Zrenika was a major in the Zimbabwe National Army based at the Army headquarters in Harare. He died of high blood pressure after having suffered a severe stroke sometime last year. Comrade Jones becomes the first hero to be buried at the Manikaland Provincial Heroes Acre. However, he is not the first provincial hero to have died in the province. Others like Comrade Jinx, Comrade Chiwombe and Comrade Mulambo, who died before him, were buried at their homes because the Manikaland Provincial Heroes Acre had not been established at the time of their death. He is survived by his wife and a child. One, two, two, two. Take one. The ever increasing price of commodities, coupled with some shortages at times, is a phenomenon that has become the order of the day in Zimbabwe, and according to Comrade Joyce Mjuru, is here to stay. What then should people do to survive in these difficult times? Minister Mjuru said, while communal and urban people have access to engage in coming final take. Minister Mjuru said, while communal and urban people have access to engage in other income generating activities, those in commercial farms and mining areas have not learned to engage in income generating activities. Minister Mjuru has called upon farm owners and miners to give their workers a piece of land for income generating activities. Marshall and Central Zani PF Provincial Production Secretary Comrade Andrew Holland also encouraged people to form groups for more production. Final take. The ever increasing price of commodities, coupled with the shortages at times, is a phenomenon that has become the order of the day in Zimbabwe and, according to Minister Mujuru, is here to stay. What then should people do to survive in these difficult times? Minister Mjuru said while communal and urban people have access to engage in income generating activities as a means of surviving, for those people in commercial farms and mines they have not learned to engage in these activities. Minister Mjuru has called upon farm owners and miners to give their workers a piece of land for income generating activities. Marshall and Central Provincial Production Secretary Andrew Holland also encouraged people to form groups for production. 